हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन। टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द ऑप्टिकल फीडबैक I hope you all have seen the previous video where I talked about the population inversion. If you have still not watched it, watch it first and then come to this video. Today we are going to talk in detail about the optical feedback concept. So this is the second concept that is required for the lasing action. The first concept that was required for the lasing action was population inversion. Now we know that in detail. Now we have to understand optical feedback. So we are going to understand the optical feedback with the help of Fabry Parrot resonator structure. So here you can see we have the basic laser structure. It is the structure which is formed with the help of an amplifying medium and two mirrors. So this is the first mirror. This is the first mirror. This is the second mirror. And from the second mirror, we are going to generate the optical output. In between the two mirrors, we have the amplifying medium. Now what happens in the case of laser structures? We have the optical cavity over here. So optical cavity is placed in between the two mirrors and now when I supply a photon, the amplifying action is going to happen in, in the optical cavity and due to which we are going to get the avalanche multiplication in the optical cavity. Due to avalanche multiplication of the photons, we are going to generate some gain. So this is how this structure is going to give me the gain. Right, so let's understand how this full process is happening. So first of all, we have one photon. We are supplying one photon to the structure. So when I supply one photon, the electrons from the higher energy state are getting excited with the photon and they will come back. And when they come back to the lower energy state, they are giving one more photon. So when I have one photon, one photon is going to emit one more photon. So now I have two photons. So two photons will travel to this mirror and from this mirror they will reflect back. So when two photons are reflecting back in the optical cavity, they are generating two more photon, right? Two photon will be generating two photons. So here we have four photons. So four photon will reflect back from this mirror and they will generate eight photon. And this phenomena keep on happening and this is how we are generating multiplied number of photon and this is called avalanche multiplication and this is how we are generating more and more number of photon inside the optical cavity so these photons which are generated are now in phase i told you whenever i am using a photon to generate one more photon these two are in phase and these two are called coherent so now all of these photons that are generated are coherent photons so now this is going to give my coherent emission. I hope you understood this. So now this optical cavity, optical cavity is going to give the feedback action. I hope you understood this. We are getting the feedback action and due to the feedback action, this structure is going to act like a resonator and we will be having a feedback of photons and due to which we have multiple reflections from the mirrors and we are generating the gain. So multiple reflection is going to increase the net gain achieved by this structure. I hope you understood it. So we are going to get a lot of radiation. These radiations will add up and they are going to generate a standing wave in the medium. Now we will be getting stable output only when the gain is equal to losses. Initially, when I start giving the photon energy to the structure, photons will start multiplying. But at a stable state, what happened? At the stable output, we will be having the multiplication or the gain will be equal to losses due to which I will be getting the stable output. Now, this length, this length can be related to various things. This length can be related to the lambda, this length can be related to n and q. So L is equal to lambda q upon 2n where n obviously we know n is the refractive index of the amplifying medium. So we are talking about the amplifying medium only and n will be the refractive index of the amplifying medium. Now lambda, lambda is the wavelength so it is emission wavelength and q is some integer. So this is how we can find out the length. So length should be the multiplication of any integer with wavelength and divided by 2n. 
right so now we have discrete emission frequencies the frequencies that are emitted are discrete the frequencies that are emitted here are not continuous so these discrete frequencies can be given by qc upon 2nl now we know what is l now frequency is given by qc upon 2nl where c is the speed of light in the vacuum so now here we know what is l we know what is l we know what is q right so now l is along the longitudinal axis so i will get the longitudinal mode along each f so now when i change the f i will get a different mode for each f so for i have discrete uh, f so i will be getting discrete modes over here so when i change q i will be having different frequency and when i change frequency i told you i will be having different mode so what is the fundamental requirement of changing the mode i will change the q so when the q vary obviously the mode is going to vary so as i told you we have the discrete frequencies frequencies are not continuous so we will be having some gap in between the two frequencies so spacing is measured in the terms of frequencies so when i know the spacing between the two frequencies i and i told you each frequency represent a mode so if i find out the spacing it means the spacing between two modes as well spacing between two frequency means spacing between two modes as well so spacing between two modes can be represented as del f in the terms of f i can represent it as c upon 2 and l so this is my intensity versus frequency graph so here this is c upon 2 and l right so now the mode separation in the terms of wavelength it can be represented as del lambda so it is lambda square upon 2 nl so now here we will not be having all of the modes which are propagated only the modes which are multiplied with the gain so we will be having some of the modes which are appearing at the outputs from here we will see how the gain curve is going to suppress the modes and this is how we are getting only some of the modes so this is my intensity versus frequency graph so you can see here we have various uh, gaps in the frequency which is c upon 2 nn and this is my intensity now here when i multiply these so here this is how i will be having gain versus frequency graph so gain is going to increase and then it is going to decrease as i increase the frequency so here you can see only some of the modes are present some here also modes were present and here also modes were present but when i multiplied the modes with the gain so now here when i multiplied the frequency with the gain and or i can say modes with the gain so only these modes which are present from here up till here these modes are present and thus i can say we have suppressed some of the modes we have suppressed outward frequency so i can say we have only some of the frequency which is present so i can say it is a monochromatic light its spectral width is very less and due to which i can say it is going to give me a very good lasing action i hope you understood how with the help of the laser i can get a monochromatic light we can get a very narrow spectral width I hope you understood this with the help of this diagram. I hope you understood all of the things that I have discussed in this video. If you have any doubt, you can put the doubt in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and don't forget to give me your feedback as well. Thank you so much.